Hey folks, this is Max from Woodsman's Finest coming to you today from my local archery range where I'm actually um, doing a couple rounds at least a week. Sometimes I'm here every single day. It's such a beautiful spring day. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Now today we're going to be talking about a new series of saws that came out by Silky Japan. So let me start with a little bit of a backstory. Um, what Silky Saws is, what it is to me. Then let's talk about this new series, what they all have in common. And then I want to go through each saw to give you a little bit of an idea of what I would use it for. Um, and then I give you a conclusion in the end and a little bit of a comparison of what is already in the lineup and what is coming out now as a limited edition. Stay tuned for that. Saws have been a means to process wood in a more efficient and safe way um, for quite a while now. And in my opinion, that is something very important, not only in outdoor education or in general in um, outdoor activities, but also, of course, in my spoon carving journey, um, all the different saws that I'm using are making life so much easier for me. It makes it very often safer for me to cut a crank into a spoon. It makes it so much easier for me to lengthen off pieces um, where I actually don't want to use the axe because it's a little bit more risky of ruining something. But of course, mainly in my daily um, task or my, my daily journey, so to say, to find green wood freshly cut down, I usually ask for permission and then I'm just getting out my temagari um, or my katana boy from my trunk and I'm going at it. Um, Silky Saws has been with me for the last 10 years, give or take. I lived in Japan for a long time um, and I've used Silky Saws not only um, in Japan, here in Europe, but also of course in North America, in Northern Canada. Um, on my canoe trips it was the safest and most efficient means to get to firewood on a daily basis without getting the axe out and actually risking a severe injury in low light and especially in a very long exposure environment um, without cell service and several portages away from the next road or house or anything like that. Now, as you can tell, <laughs> it's something very passionate for me. I think saws are amazing and in that regard, especially Japanese saws are known to be extremely efficient and very precise. This is why they're used by cabinet makers, instrument um, builders, etc., etc., all around the world now. But also, of course, in the pruning, gardening world, um, they are extremely um, popular Arborists around the world are using them, um, especially the fixed blade model, so to say, in sheaths, having them on their leg or their hip, um, and they're making their life so much easier and safer up in the trees. Um, and of course, in Japan, um, silky saws are widely used in Japanese gardens to make very clean cuts for trees to recover quickly from them and to work in environments where maybe a chainsaw is not possible. Maybe this is a good point for me to just quickly talk about my affiliation to Silky Saws. It's very important these days to um, represent a little bit of transparency uh, when it comes to the affiliation of people with brands that they're actually talking about, they're recommending or they're endorsing. Um, that's very important because there's a lot of paid promotion out there and my opinion is that me as a content creator, as a carver, as a teacher, it is important for me to share what I think is high quality, something that you invest in once and have something for a lot of years to make it more sustainable, more enjoyable and you're building a relationship with the tools that you have and they come with you on your journey. So that is really the goal that I'm having. So that being said, um, I've used silky saws for a long time all over the globe before I even got in contact with them. For a couple of years now though, they are so nice to support me um, with tools um, and I'm in turn trying to help them out with reaching more people. That's exactly what it is. So this is not so much of an influencer kind of thing, but these are tools for me that I'm working with every single day of my life, may it be in spoon carving, may it be in outdoor activities, in outdoor education, canoeing, hunting, whatever it is. But I'm also very excited, of course, about the, the upkeep of quality in these products, the little details that are so much catering to all the different uses. I mean, there's so many models, there's so many different play, blade ver variations, and all of this is very thought through, which is a passion of mine as a maker, um, as a craftsman, and as a designer of my own tools. Um, these details make such a, such a difference. And in our days of quality being compromised for profit a lot, I think this is something very important, and there's a detail about 
this video today um, that I'm gonna mention a little bit later that comes into play when it comes to actually supporting small shops, local shops that Silky has done with this new lineup. So this was a little bit of a long intro. Um, it's so important for me to set the stage very often for these videos and I hope you don't mind. Um, I know some people don't like the rambling so in the beginning I gave you a little bit of an idea what is coming up and what to look forward to. So without further ado, let's find out what the difference is between these and these. So right off the bat you're noticing a couple of main differences and I just want to quickly say what they all have in common. First and foremost what you're realizing is there is a coating on the blade. Um, the details of the saws, other than that, are very similar. Um, they come in, in three lengths. There's a pocket boy, there is a gum boy, and then there is a big boy. The pocket boy is 18 centimeters, just as the regular model. This one here is a 24 centimeter gum boy, just like one of the regular models that comes in different lengths. And then we have a big boy that comes in 36 centimeters. Um, the blade differences, or the tooth differences, I'm gonna just mention quickly when I go over the saws individually. But for now, you can see there is a coating on here. This is a nickel tin coating. And the main reason for that is something that I've actually talked with Ray Mears um, a few years ago. I was working in Tamagami in Northern Ontario for a canoe outfitter, carving paddles, making leather gear, making knives, carving spoons and all the good stuff. Um, and Ray Mears came up there for the canoe festival and um, I had him at my booth, which was really, really exciting. Um, and I ask him a couple questions that I really had for a few years um, and one of them was the saws. Why are you using the backhoe? Why are you using the backhoe Laplander um, with the regular European type teeth with the push and pull? Why not the highly efficient Japanese saws that are work less fatiguing um, and more controlled just working on the pull? And the one thing he said to me back then was very very interesting. He said he loves the Japanese saws but he has never had a student who managed to break the backhoe. So, over the years, I think that Silky actually took that um, suggestion from people. And I think I haven't broken a Silky saw in probably eight years. But I know that beginners, knowing the push and the pull method, um, and working with both usually their entire life, they're picking up a Silky saw that might be a little bit more flexible, and they push in, um, the teeth might get caught, and they sometimes rip off the tip or they bend the blade or something like that. So I think. What Silky did with that was that um, the dimension staying the same, uh, we have the non-set teeth um, that make sure that the cleft is a little bit wider than the actual saw blade, so you're not getting stuck, etc., etc. But this coating makes the induction hardened teeth a little bit tougher, it makes the flex a little bit less, and it makes the wear a little bit less. Because the big deal with this new Silky saws is they're not only catering to people cutting wood in the outdoors, but also cutting bone. So this is also catering really towards people who go on backcountry hunts, who go on canoe trips where they might actually in, include hunting or someone who is just like processing a lot of their own game, all the power to them um, and might actually need something that also can cut bone. It might look sound a little bit macabre to some of you and I understand that but for many people that's reality and these saws um, can come in very handy especially being so safe when you do that kind of stuff. Apart from that um, nickel tin coating, I think they call it, um, that makes everything run a little bit smoother in general. Um, it's almost like on a pocket knife where you have like these washers that have like um, a coating on them, right? Making a pocket knife run smoother. These as well, the whole mechanism, everything just seems to be a little bit smoother. Um, I can tell definitely in work that there is less flex in the blade, which means less of my power is actually going into flex and more of my power is going into the cut. That's what I also do when I design my own carving tools. I am very much against flex in any type of tools. It's almost like on a mountain bike where you have the suspension turned on and with every time you kick it into the paddle, you're kind of like just whipping around, right? So that is a great thing. The other thing that comes to your attention right away is the handle. I'm gonna let you have a closer look at all the saws when I'm going through them. I'm just handling them in different ways so you get a very close-up look. But right away you can see this is this beautiful kind of khaki tan brown with a lot of different color shades in it. Um, and this is what they call like an arbor composite. Um, I think that it's something similar to the material used by Kupilka for their um, cutlery and for their um, cookses. I think it's come some kind of 
um, artificial um, material mixed with um, biocomposite. So it is actually having a different feel. It's completely rigid. There is no bend to it, there is no flex, but it is very grippy. And they designed that apparently, um, according to my information, to make it a little bit more grippy when wet. Um, it may be some mud, it may be water, but it could also be blood, which is just involved when you do process your own animals. That's just the reality of it. And I find that to be true. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that quickly as well in comparison with my other silky saws. I always like the rubberized handle and I do very much like the bright colors because at camp you're having a lot of gear um, and so constantly stuff is just leaning somewhere, lying somewhere and you can't find it. And I do appreciate the bright yellow, the bright red, the bright blue um, as I like it in knife handles for example to be bright orange because you put the thing down for a moment and in the leaves on the ground they just disappear, right? But there's also an appeal to these type of colors if you constantly or if you're um, trying to stay a little bit subdued as far as colors, it might be a hunting or um, at some type of outdoor situation where you need something like this and you might not want to have a super bright saw in your pack or something because there is animals out there, for example, who see color. And if you're a photographer or like an um, ornithologist and you're just trying to take bird pictures, stuff like that, bird watcher, um, you might actually need something like that to clear a lane for pictures or something like that but you might not want to have super bright colors on your gear. So this is the kind of consideration that I really like about these. So this is more or less um, what is different about them and what the thought behind it was. And let's just have a quick look at all the different saws and what they could do for you um, in your daily life. All right, folks, I'm gonna come in a little bit closer and give you a quick run over with these two saws, um, just for you to have a little bit of an impression what they look like compared to each other side by side and maybe getting a little bit of the feel through the camera just trying to do my best here all right so if you have followed the channel for a while then you know this thing here this is my daily companion I've used this harvesting wood lengthening wood in the shop spoon carving I have several different blades for this I have two of these actually and I have recommended this saw over anything else more often than I can count. This is the big boy in the 36 centimeters and it comes with the XL blade. And you can tell already there is a little bit more grind, not really grind, but there's more grip operating this um, folding mechanism. Of course, the new saws as well come in two different settings. This is the non-coated blade and this is of course the XL. So it's six and a half teeth TPI, teeth per inch. Um, I have several of these blades and I can switch and swap them super quickly as you know through this mechanism here. The grip, I like this color. The grip is very rubbery, as a, it's a complete rubber handle. And as far as I can tell, the aluminum frame actually goes all the way through. So this is very nice and rubbery and there is a little bit of flex in this blade and this is already the thickest and the heaviest that this one comes with. I have no problem with it. I've never bent one of these in a while, but I've done a little bit of bending to the more medium um, tooth size of these, but I love the medium as well for dry wood. So I recommend always this saw here with a medium blade or medium tooth blade. Now in comparison, here is the Big Boy Outback series. This thing is beautiful and it looks really, really great. You can see that it's way less reflective, which can also be something coming in very handy. The mechanism is smooth compared very much. Now the handle, as you've seen before, is the absolute same, um, it's the absolute same design. And you can actually see in the lanyard hole that the aluminum frame also goes all the way through but there is really no flex at all to this. So I were working with this. I really have to say that I'm getting a little bit more efficiency out of it. I don't know if this is just something that I'm, I don't know, imagining, but it could also come from the smoother coating. And this is the exact reason for that. There is less flex in this blade by quite a bit. And this coating really wants to just slide inside material a lot easier. Another big difference between this one and the regular big boy is that it comes actually in this bag that has some 
I think some anti-cut coating or something inside. This makes it great because sometimes when I carry the other big boy in the pack, um, it has some sharp edges on the on the spine of the blade, and I do scratch up other things. And it's kind of, as you can tell, as I think a snake, um, so because of the the bent blade or like the the curved blade, which is super efficient in wood, it actually has the teeth sticking out a little bit, and this can be potentially something you don't want too much. So especially when it comes to compartmentalization on a canoe trip or like any type of other outdoor activity i really like this coming with a bag like that with a grommet here to put something through hang it in camp somewhere on a tree and so you always know where it is so i really think this is a great idea now the big boy is your overall saw i mean if i had the chance to only have one saw of these i mean this is still such a compact package it goes on the side of your backpack or whatever the back plate is you just throw it in the side of a canoe pack um this does everything um trees that are way bigger than this by just like working yourself around actually always cutting you know halfway through and then turning the log i've done some pretty severe thing with these big boys and i do think that this new um, Outback Big Boy um, in this limited edition is definitely, if you're a first time Silky owner, it's really cool. I like him a lot. I do like him a lot. Um, does it w do something completely different than a regular Big Boy? It has a little bit more efficiency in cutting because of the coating and the less flex in the handle. I personally think it's not a big deal though. And this is the reason, I'm, and I'm saying this right away for all of the other saws as well. I'm not trying to sell you anything you don't need. If you have already a big boy or whatever saw that you have um, and you don't have an issue with it, don't change. The regular silky line is absolutely incredible. It's used by professionals around the world. But this is just a little bit of something extra. It's a limited edition. It's in a way an ode to something that has been around for a long time and just gets a little bit of a new twist um, and so I think if you're not having a silky saw yet or you want to add another one to your lineup it's a great opportunity to just get something that's a little bit different maybe um, and yeah it has some differences in the flex and in the um, in the the life expectancy if you will of the teeth so yeah that's definitely a big argument and of course the bag is something that comes in very very, very handy now next up we have the Gomboy and I was an owner for a Gomboy for I don't know longer than I can remember. I love this saw. It's so efficient, it is so small, it does so much and I really actually do love the straight blade as well because this is actually a medium 10 TPI, 10 teeth, um, teeth per inch so it does dry wood very well as well. Now you can also get these um, different replacement blades for all different silky saws so you don't actually have to get a different saw just get a different blade. However um, I do really appreciate this one um, on canoe trips and smaller um, overnighters because I do think that these t 10 ppi are actually a little bit better in dry wood than the big teeth and this is exactly what they were made for. Also if it comes to processing other things like for example bone in general a smaller or like a higher tpi is nice. However the gomboy definitely suffers from being quite flexible. Although it's shorter, this is a 21 centimeter version, I think. Um, never even looked that up. Yes, I think it's 21 centimeters. Um, it doesn't definitely has a little bit of flex and I think some people in the past have definitely ripped this one off. Not necessarily um, seasoned users of Japanese saws, but I can see how it happens. Now, this is the 24 centimeter Outback Gomboy. And there's a lot of differences in here. First of all, it is a curved blade. It has a lower tooth count. It's 8 TPI, so they're a lot bigger. Um, there is a lot less flex in the blade. It is super rigid. It is such an efficient saw. Um, way bigger than its size. Um, and I'm gonna say this once more today, but it's running smooth like a pocket knife. It rem um, reminds me of like a, a spider core or something. It's really smooth with the, um, the coating and all. And there is a special thing about these, which is 
um, in each of these there is a certain amount of teeth. I don't know if you can tell that. There is actually one right there where my forefinger is. And these teeth are actually supposed to get um, the damp sawdust out of the cleft during cutting. So very efficient, helps super well. Um, also, I mean, this is still a very, very small saw, but in hand it just makes, does so much work. Um, it definitely is an improvement for me in efficiency and when it comes to flexibility and um, structural integrity, there is definitely a difference between these two. However, on a longer blade, there's usually a little bit more flex, of course, to be expected. And I can't really tell that that's the case. So um, in some ways, shapes or forms, there's definitely some improvement in this saw here. But I love this combo and it's very, very affordable. Maybe one thing to mention at this point is as well, these are not vastly more expensive than these. So you will not pay an extra premium for the limited edition, which is also something I found really cool. It definitely shows a customer appreciation coming out with this um, limited Outback series. So um, maybe an interesting thing to talk about as well for a moment. These will not be breaking the bank compared to the other ones. Now the Gomboy of course comes in this super handy plastic sheath with the safety belt loop, as you've seen it on my video about this. Um, the other Gomboy, the regular one, um, nothing much to say about it. It's very safe. It keeps your stuff safe as well in a pack in case you're transporting them together. Um, the Gomboy was something else and yeah, I think it's great that it actually comes with such a safe and well thought through case. Now the Gombo being such an extremely versatile blade, um, now I have to come to something this is a little bit of a love story, I gotta say. This is a pocket boy. Um, it also comes in a box like this, very safe, hardly rattles. It's very well fitted and also comes with this loop here that goes onto your belt. Super thought through. I had already a love relationship with this little guy. It is actually the XL teeth variation of the pocket boy. It's, I think, 18 centimeters. Um, super big TPI actually for such a big blade, uh, short blade, it's actually 8 TPI. Um, it does so much work. I, I mean, what can I say? This is the ultimate big small saw. Tiny saw. And as you've seen probably in my demonstration, this does a lot of work. Now, funny enough, and I just literally put this in my pocket here, the Outback Series Pocket Boy actually comes with a straight blade. Funny enough, it's just the opposite from the, from the configuration that I had with the Gomboy. Now, this comes in a medium teeth configuration, which is 10 TPI. Um, and I love this thing. I really do like this thing. It does a lot of work, and I think for its size, um, and its application for being really something you just literally carry in your car cargo pocket. You use all around the yard um, for garden work. Um, you bring in on hunts, maybe to cut out a shooting lane um, or as a bird watcher. Um, just have something with you that's compact, that goes into your, even into your photo bag. It's so cool. Um, the handle in this arbor composite is especially awesome on this little thing. I find it extremely grippy, works super well. The ergos on these are amazing and I do appreciate actually the straight blade and that Silky has done this pocket boy in a straight blade configuration for, um, yeah, the most common use I think, which is probably dry wood. Um, and even on, on green wood, I think these smaller teeth are a little bit nicer in a smaller saw blade um, and of course in your workshop as a spoon carver this does so many stop cuts cleft um, crank cuts all the good stuff I yank this out all the time so if you're on a budget and you just want to have one of these the pocket boy is very very hard to beat for what it is at this point I'd actually like to do a little bit of a suggestion so you know that I've reviewed the Ono in the past which is the full um, integral little hatchet, very, very reminiscent of a Nata um, from Silky as well. Um, and if you're interested in any of these videos, please just go back on my channel and find them. And this has seen a lot of love, as you can tell. 
Now, the combination of these two, for people out there who are into hunting and um, who do process their own meat and, on, and game especially, now having talked about Silky advertising these saws actually explicitly for um, processing bone, I think you're going to be very hard pressed finding a nicer um, combo to bring that is still rather compact on maybe a bigger hunt or just keep in your car or something like that because the combination of the stainless steel integral hatchet with a short blade like this especially within um, working with game I think this could be an absolute combo made in heaven as far as game processing so this is just my suggestion I think they both come in um, with very very good arguments for this type of game processing application let me know what you think about that um, but these being advertised that way and this ono being designed the way it is with stainless steel and rubber um, being able to take the grip off cleaning it out completely I think that is a very strong argument for that type of application and this is what I was used this for and again it doesn't get much more versatile and especially compact than this pocket boy either in the regular configuration or in this awesome Outback configuration. I mean, it's basically a pocket knife. I really like this. All right, folks, so just a couple of words to finish this off. Um, these are a limited series, and I think that Silky really wanted to um, support some local stores um, and some more small internet outdoor stores. So these will not be available at all from the big giants like Amazon so and so on and so forth. There is actually a list as far as I know on Silky Europe and all the all other Silky um, main distributors and headquarters in the world where you can find a list of the shops that will have these available. So whoops, so I'm gonna link these below. Other than that, um, I'm sorry that these videos are not really um, as compact. I'm always trying to keep them at like five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. But there's so many details in these at, um, in these and I really want to do them justice and I don't want to just cut it off I, I am fascinated and kind of passionate about details and design and craft and so um, I hope you you um, forgive me about these being rather long but I really hope that I brought these um, and what I think they are close to your um, attention and was able to share a couple details I definitely think that these have some improvements over the regular series but it definitely don't um, they definitely don't render them obsolete. So um, if you have a silk you saw already, don't feel like you have to go out and just get another one just because they look different and have a couple extra features. If you're new to silky saws, if you want to get a saw that will be with you for a very, very long time um, and that you can really trust and, um, and rely on, then definitely, by no means, um, don't hold back. Go out and get one of these and you're going to have a very, very good time taking them um, on trips, hiking, camping, um, using them for spoon carving, harvesting green wood, and so on and so forth. Folks, please um, like and subscribe. This is really the only way the algorithm is realizing that you actually like what's going on here in this channel. I'm putting a lot of work in here, and I hope that it kind of pays off for you watching these videos. Um, you can also find all my tools, of course, on woodsmansfinest.com. Um, there's all the links below. I have over 70 hours at this point on my Boon TV channel. It's all spoon carving, decoration, Lots of sharpening, over eight hours of sharpening courses. And I just actually did five hours in two courses um, about carving my kayak spoon and doing my signature chip carving. So um, each of these courses is two and a half hours long and gives you all the details that I know. Um, and I'm sharing whatever I can with making you a better creative problem solver. So folks, thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much, Silky, for the support over the years. You're supporting my work um, and I'm really trying to give this an honest opinion on of mine I haven't really found any um, downsides to these saws so far otherwise I would have shared them with you and these didn't just arrive and I unpacked them and shared them now but I've been working with these for two and a half months and I really like them. so thanks Silky good job thanks for very much for watching folks um, I hope I'm gonna see you next time and you stay safe cheers